The new CEO of Lyft, David Reischer, has responded to a horrific incident someone experienced. And I gotta be awesome, this is an amazing move on his part. You can see right here, you know, kind of a quick synopsis of what happened. This was pretty horrific that a Virginia woman claims her Lyft driver tried to kidnap her over the weekend. I can't even imagine you know, what this experience must have been like, you know, she detailed scary moments on social media in hopes of holding the Rioter app accountable. And she said she was obviously going to take a lift, of course. But then, as you said here, my driver missed numerous turns, prolonging my ride. In the midst of DC traffic, he almost hit a car and slams on his brakes, stopping about a foot in, uh, from the car in front of him. And then I was immediately on alert after that. When she tried to communicate with the driver, she says she was disappointed with the reaction. His response just seemed so sinister and evil. She made several attempts to talk to him, trying to figure out what's going on. And she waited for him to come to a stop, jumped out of the car and ran away. So her Twitter thread got a lot of attention and everything. However, and this was very bizarre to me, Lyft deactivated her account after she alerted them about the situation. And the good thing, at least again, to give Lyft's CEO credit, he responded to her tweet going down here. Uh, I'll show you actually on his page. Let's go down here. Him saying, I'm so sorry you've gone through this, Caitlin. Let me have a look. We can do better. And for those who say protect women, I'm proud of our record, but there's more to do. Stay tuned. So they're already making moves, you know, going here as well. Um, of a spokes, uh, spokesperson said this statement to Fox. We take reports like this very seriously and always work to take immediate and corrective action. Regrettably, our first response came up short. Therefore, we have reactivated her account and contacted her to our office support. So that's huge. And especially that, you know, I think they're going to obviously reprimand the driver and everything. And I got to give him credit that this is actually like a really good move on his part. I've noticed, and I've said this in other videos, he is really trying to, for lack of a better phrase, be more of a human rather than a CEO, I think. And I've noticed this, for example, and this is like kind of like a random one, but I got to give this credit, like, for example, you know, talking about this, for example, um, talking about different things when it comes to Lyft, you know, uh, this is like a random thread. And even he was willing to admit, look, you know, that's true. We always don't get it right, but that's the goal. Even responding to people who are just talking about the pros and cons of Uber and Lyft. Of course, there's a lot of Uber and Lyft creators on the internet, myself being one of them. And he's responded to some of these people. Even up here, I thought this was pretty awesome that he said, you know, uh, this random person, Sergio A, thank you for the, the weekly guarantee, you know, um, they were talking about this, you know, in terms of a YouTube video, and he commented saying, congrats on the bonuses. Clever move to do Uber Eats at the same time you've been busy. And he also said, we'll look into the accounting because obviously they messed up some of the uh, the bonuses. We'll look into the accounting and clear that up. And I was thinking like, that's a pretty awesome move given how competitive right now the nature is of Uber versus Lyft for him to say, hey, good for you to do both Lyft and Uber Eats at the same time. In addition to him responding, obviously what happened with Caitlin, and obviously that's horrifying what she had to deal with. You know, I think he's, and, and this to me, I think is a really, really kind of, although red flag on this initial part to deactivate her account right away, because she did nothing wrong. I would say it's a green flag, or at least a step towards the right direction with him responding and trying to do what he can to make the situation right. I gotta be honest, I've been really liking what David Reacher has been doing as a CEO. Yes, there's been a couple questionable moves. You know, I know it's one of those kind of tough situations as I mentioned in a bunch of other videos, him laying off over a thousand people when it comes to, you know, left workers and everything. Very difficult, but I feel like somewhat necessary moves, especially if they're trying to one, just get their head above water and two, and you know, especially compete with Uber. But they have said, you know, even the CEO has stated numerous times, like, look, we're trying to run our own race, which I think is a great and smart move as opposed to being like, oh, we got to compete with Uber to be the best ride train company possible. But also when it comes to Lyft, he's been saying, you know, from the get go, like, look, I just want to get back to the basics, what the drivers want, what the passengers want. He realized, look, for most people, they don't like shared rides. The biggest reason why they do them is to save money. So we're going to really encourage and push, wait and save. They've removed shared rides. And I'm going to be honest, for drivers, no driver liked doing shared rides. No driver did. On the passenger side, I know some people are disappointed when I did the video talking about how Lyft did remove shared rides. I know some people did comment saying, hey, Mark, I'm not gonna lie. I don't like this. Like, I love taking the shared rides. But hey, I feel like for most people, the best benefit of the shared rides was saving money. 
And so with wait and save, you kind of get that benefit. And at least to me, I'd rather, in a sense, wait in my own house and get a cheaper ride than have to wait in a lift to get a cheaper ride, right? I mean, if you think about it, the biggest thing when it comes to wait and save and shared rides is in a sense, you're trading your time to save money. That's really the trade-off. But when it comes to shared ride, you're kind of stuck in that lift. When it comes to wait and save, you can be in your house, maybe getting some work done. Maybe you can order it a bit earlier and continue getting ready if you're going out for that night, et cetera, et cetera. And now bringing everything back full circle to this movie video and the point of it, I think he's you know, really kind of looked at the ground saying, okay, what do people want? He's trying to be a human of what do drivers want, what do riders want? And I think this is like a very big step in the right direction of him trying to make huge moves, some of them huge in terms of, like I said, removing shared rides, or I know this talk about him remo removing Lift Lux, which I don't know why he would do that. To me, that's a kind of an odd one. Um, but you know, he's trying to make big, big moves, laying off over a thousand people, well, that was unfortunate. But also I think what could be considered not necessarily small moves, but very specific things that, although yeah, it's more of a personal thing, really have a big impact over the ride train community, right? Like this kind of situation of being, you know, personally as CEO, commenting and tweeting to somebody about what happened and making sure that, you know, the right steps get taken in place, not only to reactivate her account, of course, that's kind of like a small thing, but I think making sure that she feels comfortable, making sure that something like this doesn't happen again, putting in more security measures. And I think having that personable thing, and I think one thing for both, I think passengers and drivers that I've noticed when it comes to Lyft is Lyft is typically considered the more personable app. I've talked about this before in prior videos, but they did do a study and survey, probably not surprising. And most people, drivers and passengers, prefer Lyft more than Uber. Now I will say, and I did a video about this when it was last week, that when it comes to taking Lyft and Uber, pretty much in a sense, the same experience in terms of you get picked up or you order the ride, might as well back up a little bit. You order the ride, you get picked up, the ride brings you from point A to point B, you got dropped off. So the overall logistical aspect of ride sharing kind of is the same for both Lyft and Uber, but I think most people tend to consider Lyft the more friendlier app, the more personable app. I know in the beginning, Lyft's main sticky point was it's not about getting you there, but how you get there in terms of enjoying the experience, you know? So I think Lyft has always tried to be the more personable app. And I think this on his move is a huge step in the right direction, right? I think for CEO to go out of his way to tweet and say to her like, hey, like we're gonna make things right. We're gonna work on this. Yes, I know people could argue that it's a business move, right? He's just trying to do it to save face, right? Because obviously this got a ton of attention. So we could, so you could definitely argue that maybe he's like, oh, I'm gonna try to respond to her personally, but I was even thinking that if this happened with Uber, I don't think the Uber CEO would do this. I mean, I, I could be wrong. I could be wrong, right? But I think like what David Reacher is really trying to do is really make the app way more personable and way more just, I think, familiar with a lot of people of what do people actually want, really trying to lay the gr uh, groundwork, getting back to the basics, like I mentioned much of other videos. And I have to give him credit. I think this is a great move on his part. In addition to, like I showed you on his Twitter feed, when someone made a video, you know, a YouTube video talking about how they didn't get paid correctly from Lyft, he said, look, one, we'll look into the accounting to make sure that you get you do get paid correctly. Or two, I'm saying, hey, you're doing Uber Eats as well. That's very smart. And I feel like that's a very realistic personal thing to say. Of course, they, Uber and Lyft isn't dumb. They know drivers drive for both. I mean, you can get a decal on your car. In case you didn't know, for a lot of states and cities, they do require you to have like an Uber sticker or a Lyft sticker on your car, just to kind of say like, hey, I'm a ride share driver. And there's a lot of places you can get one that has Uber and Lyft on both. If like, so you get a ride share at Vegas, for example, or other hotel areas, they usually have Uber and Lyft pickup station, right? Everybody knows that most drivers drive for both. Everybody knows that most passengers or people ordering it have both apps on their phone. They, they can't be naive to that. I mean, it's kind of the world we're living in. So I do respect David Richard saying, hey, you know, I do get it. Like if you wanna make more money, balancing Lyft and Uber Eats, good for you. And I'm like, you know what? That's a very good move on his part as well, where I'm like, he didn't have to do that. It's not like that YouTube video, that little tweet that I showed you. It's not like it got like a ton of media attention or whatever, but for him to go out of his way to not only address the situation in terms of talking to accounting, but also to give him, you know, props for lack of a better word, that he's doing this for both Uber, or that he's doing both Uber Eats and Lyft and trying to balance it out to make more money and encouraging him to do so. That's a very human-like response. And I think that that is showing, you know, that from the second he became the CEO, he's already made big moves, like I've mentioned a bunch of times. And I think in some ways, and I've seen this for a lot of like really successful businesses, that for the CEO or the people running the company, for them to make big moves that are so important, but then small moves like this, like this probably 
I don't think I've seen that mentioned on any YouTube video or any other news site of him saying to somebody, hey, we're gonna look into the accounting, but also good for you when it comes to driving with our competitor and creating a smart strategy toward or in order to optimize your income and not only commenting on it and encouraging it, I don't think I can, I don't see that being mentioned anywhere. So even the small things that he's doing, just make it more personable, more relatable, and more just human-like, I think are huge moves in the right direction. You know, I know I've done a bunch of videos, I don't know how many at this point, but a lot about Uber versus Lyft, just because it's gotten more rocky, and I've mentioned before, Uber's doing better revenue-wise, Lyft has been doing worse, but I think Lyft is slowly getting bigger, better and better and bigger and bigger, and I think he's doing a lot of amazing things. And also too, as a side note, and I mentioned this in, I think, last week's video, Uber's now gonna start having ads on their platform, which is weird because I'm like, if Uber's already doing so well, why do they need ads on their platform? That would frustrate me. I haven't not seen any yet on my app. We'll see what happens. Knock on wood. You know, but if I saw that, I feel like I'd be more likely to order Lyft, even if the Uber's cheaper. I'm just like, I don't want to see ads when I'm just trying to like go about my day or go out or whatever I'm trying to do, you know? So, but at the end of the day, I think that it's been very interesting to see a lot of these moves he's been making. And I think this to me is the first... It's gonna be an oxymoron, uh, what I'm about to say, but the first big small move I've seen yet, where he said, you know what, I'm just not, I'm not gonna try to make this big public thing, this big, you know, huge move like laying off over a thousand people. I'm gonna try to really be personable with people, respond to this one situation directly from my Twitter, and try to make amends of the situation, try to make things better, make things better, more comfortable, learn from it, and grow. I'm going to comment on this one person talk about our accounting and give him a compliment and encourage him to continue driving for Uber Eats and Lyft because if he's making more money doing that, that's awesome and good for him. And it seems very, very I think, I, I think this is very important, especially to do both the big and what could be served the small and very personal and direct and having honest human communication because I think that's what really goes to company, right? You know, I think that so far it's been great to see his progress. And I think moves like this, I think are very important for Lyft to kind of come about, like I said, getting their head above water making more money, especially as a company and trying to get out of that kind of negative margin they've been in. This is huge and I gotta give them credit. I think this is a very, very amazing move in the right direction. And I gotta say, I think for both Lyft, but especially the CEO, I've loved what they've been doing. And this is another big step in the right direction for Lyft.